Hi again. So this is going to be a bit different than the last article from here. I'm going to go by two articles, though it's a part one and two in a series called Raw Photo Editing Software. In these two parts, there's nine pieces of software altogether. Both articles got three different titles, but we'll go with Raw Photo Editing Software part one and two. To add to the confusion, I'm going to inform you that part one was last updated November 7, 2019, part two last updated March 2019. So we know this much, there's no publishing date, flaws and errors that would have occurred before November and March 2019 should be fixed, and there's no way to tell what has been fixed or changed. Well, as you might have gathered, these articles are made to evaluate the software and assess the usefulness for beginners and intermediate. So let's focus on these nice boxes, which sum up the findings. We'll do them sort of chronologically. Well, actually, I'd like to jump to the plugin or standalone. That's dumb. All of them are standalone. If they were only plugins, then they would not be raw editing software. And working as a plugin to Adobe is almost standard. So that should not count towards the ability as a raw editor at all. The box should instead say, do they work as plugins? And do they work with plugins? Because that is weirdly left out. As a side note to that, most do work as plugins and with plugins. On one in particular works really well with plugins. In fact, often better than Lightroom. And just to clarify, on one is not on my personal top three editor list, nor am I in any way sponsored. And I feel I have to mention this, Skylum does and did a lot of paid advertisement. One of the more prominent methods among all the others are sell through this link and you get X dollars per sale, which also introduced the you're not paid unless you sell and you don't sell unless you tell people it's good. Often that makes sure some lying is introduced. Not saying this is paid, but stick with me here and see if we can spot some tiny clues. And also, why are there so much hate for on one? Sure, it's not amazing. And Lumina is a better editor in several regards, but on one is a capable program. So ease of use, Lumina and Photoshop Elements get nine, Topaz eight, and yeah, with these programs, you just drag and drop, or in the program, you choose open image and then find them. So that's easy, but you can do that with Affinity on one and Photoshop too, but they got two and three, also an intermediate so it's not that. Maybe it's because on one Lightroom starts in browser mode. Because if you go to edit, all of them has pretty much the same basic layout and tools, or at least very similar sliders. And how is Skylum 9? In many respects, its design and tools section is very similar to on one Raw processor. Okay, 9 for Skylum and 10 for Lightroom. 10 is stupid. First off, Lightroom is really good, but 10 is to exaggerate. 10 would be flawless. Perfect, amazing, but anyone who works with Lightroom knows it has faults and is missing basic things like real layers. They only just added a texture slider, enhanced detail feature and GPO accelerated editing and other tools. In 2020, most tools added to Lightroom since 2018 are basic tool present in almost all of these competitors in 2018. But again, maybe the writer is not that experienced or lacking in knowledge. Spoiler, that actually is the reason, you'll see. layers. I I don't know why some things get different scores in beginner and intermediate, because as in layers, all are about the same in adding and using. Skylum, I really like Luminar, but the filters are pretty basic, good, but basic. But seriously, 9. Luminar 2018 is a really good beginner program, but its layers is definitely not 9. Too many issues. Affinity and Photoshop are based on filters. It's the workflow. They got tons of different filters. They get 7. On one has almost Photoshop level filters and possibilities, it gets two. Lightroom's layers are almost non-existing compared to any of the others. It has less layer options than Aftershot Pro. Nine, in this context, it's a one, since it is literally the program with the least and the simplest layers and seeing Aftershot gets one, I think that is fair. So before this gets way out of hand and takes way too long, I'll try to do the rest a bit quicker. Presets. Again, why does Lumina get nine? Why does Lightroom? Sure, both got some, but on one has hundreds of filled in and just like the other two, you can easily find a lot more for free and to buy, though there's no customization in Lumina. If you don't buy from Skylum, the presets end up in user presets. One huge, unsortable, undividable, unrelenting, vast scroll-only receptacle. 
On One has a really good and easy customization, which is easier and faster to use than Lightroom, which also got pretty good customization. Oh, and the fact that before On One made a raw editor, they made On One effects. And here we come to some really stupid hate about On One presets. They override all your settings and there's no way to even undo them. Once a preset is applied, you have to just reset everything and start over. If you don't like it, two things here. Control C is your friend. Seriously, it works with most programs. And they only affect the effect tab where you got full manual control over it. So basically she's lying and I don't know why. It wasn't apparent off the bat. The presets are just a selection of filters that are being applied in the effect module. But the odd thing is that you can see them and click on them when you're in develop. Well, it's not really sorted into modules that way. It's more like tabs. The reason most presets are just filters and or local adjustments, which unlike Lightroom presets, do not change any of the changes you already manually made to the image. So since Lightroom is not layers, any changes is changing your manual settings as well. Even often searing out things, it does not affect just because it's poorly made presets. Oh, and if you didn't know, in Lightroom, you mainly use the presets when you are in develop, but you can also apply them during import in the library. And this is why it's stupid. Why is the exact same thing great in Lightroom, but terrible and weird here? You add the preset the same place and that's Okay, I don't get it. I couldn't see what they were even doing to the image and how to amend the settings until I went to the effects just to look. And there they were. First off, this negates your previous sentence. And how does this surprise you? Okay, I'll give you, it's weird that effects are put in the effect tab. Sure, do you often get confused whether gas goes into the car or into the car's gas tank? Because the gas tank is the hint here. And maybe mention, since you found it, not only could you control a master slider for all the filters at once, but each filter had individual transparency sliders and editable settings. Or you could just stick with what you said first, it overrides everything and you have to start over. I'm, I'm sorry, but how stupid is this? First claiming they override your settings, which it doesn't. Then you go to say the changes were in the effects module, which first off means they didn't override your settings at all. So your baseless line again, you're confusing. You're mad about something that's Okay, maybe she'll make more sense if we go further. But seriously, you find the presets weird because you can add them while editing the picture. All of these programs let you do that. The only one that's really confusing is Luminar, which changes tool layout depending on the preset you use. So chromatic aberration is called color fringe in develop only under lens correction. So was tricky to find. Okay, it's called color fringe because it's color fringing and there's a lot of reasons why you get it. One of the most used words is chromatic aberration, which basically means color abnormality. What, why and how is a long and boring and technical explanation. If you want to know more, just Google it. Here's a crazy coincidence. Lightroom has hidden it the exact same tricky place. So has most other editors as well. Actually in Lightroom, it's hidden under an extra tab called Manual and Lumina has hidden theirs in a sub menu of the develop tool, which you often have to manually add, which is so much simpler. Hence the top grade and the fact that you didn't find it and mentioned it needed it. Why do you like Lumina so much if you can't even use it? Okay, by the way, do you know Lightroom's much simpler name for it? Fringe, that is so much better than color fringe, was it? Eh, side note, on one fixes chromatic aberration automatically. All of these tools are fine and on one is in no way the best here, but why praise Lumina like you got paid and this on one because you're inept or just an idiot? I know she claims to be an expert and a professional photographer, but she's sorely lacking in knowledge about the subject of editing, lenses, editing programs, possibly cameras, and definitely common photography, beginner knowledge. See previous video. A lot of her issues does not sound like program issues, more like maintenance issues. Driver, install and or reboot and so on. I would go out on a limb and say, not the type that maintains a computer often enough for a smooth running experience. Too many times she mentions, program wouldn't do this, wouldn't do that. I had to restart. Maybe you should work a bit on your computer skills too, because if you don't know how to install a program properly, that's not really the program's fault. The thing is, although all programs are different, they are still basically the same, as in all editors got mostly the same 
frame, controls, and sliders. Lightroom is primarily an editor. Photoshop and Affinity manipulators. It's a short story for another time. So, as a beginner, all should either be too hard or easy enough. Maybe except Luminar because, again, changes tools so you don't always know what you have. Here we got again about on one. I've played with it for a few hours and honestly, I can't make anything look good with this program or figure out the interface on my own. First, a bad workman always blames his tools. How can you spend hours? If you have ever tried Lightroom, it would seem familiar from the first time you saw the browser section. But then again, could be you're starting out with badly exposed and badly framed pictures. Maybe work on your photo techniques and skills, learn how to use the camera. The Lumen Mask, which is luminosity. Oh my god! How did you ever figure that out? The word Lumen, which derives from the word luminosity and basically means the same. I had to watch a couple of videos to figure out masking and after that, the Lumen Mask. Oh, what the fuck is wrong with you? A couple of videos to figure out... Okay. Overall, in my review of On One, I found it clunky, odd, not intuitive, or easy to figure out without watching videos, and definitely not for beginners. How are you able to use Lightroom when you are this useless? I never did get the hang of layers in On One Raw, as I didn't have enough time to spend learning it. That tells you something, right? That tells me that you're an idiot at photo editing and you have never tried anything but Lightroom, I'd say, but I'm not sure I know how to start Lightroom and you do not consider any other layers layers unless it's adjustment layer, which is just one type of layer. Okay, so I'll show it. Here we got overall settings. This is the base settings called basic in Lightroom. That would be the ground layer, the one that fully interacts with the base file. This is local adjustments. These are layers fully maskable and all kinds of blend modes and you can add any shapes or masks or anything you want to them. These are the effect filters. Also layers and like local adjustments, you can put any kinds of masks, gradients or anything on here. It's layers. And then you got this one. If you got eyes, you can read it says layers. So yeah, no layers, most definitely. Hard to do, control. You had to use hours to find those, especially one called layers. How would you ever find that without videos? Maybe a bit more advanced than Lumina, as in you got much more filters to choose from, but still much simpler than Photoshop. And with layers on Lightroom, this one is simple to answer. No, Lightroom does not have layers, but it still gets two and on one gets one. However, it is an easy right click to take the image from Lightroom into Photoshop. In on one, it's also easy. Right click and then take image from on one into Photoshop. Most of these can send to and from Lightroom and Photoshop, making the two for Lightroom absurd. I the all should be a minimum of two or Lightroom should be zero or one. And here's a quick one pertaining to layers. As you said, black and white is limited and you can apply it in both the develop and effect module. I'm not sure the difference, but I got different results using the same settings on the color slider in each. There's no black and white layer setting in the develop menu. It's it's just the color where you choose white balance and saturation. That, that's not really a black and white filter. But then again, you're the expert, you know stuff like this, so... Well, that probably went on for a bit too long. Let's look at browser. Photoshop gets 6 and 9. That's stupid. As in the article, you're saying you're using Bridge. It's free and not part of Photoshop, and all the programs can actually use Bridge or any other paid or free organizer. But that shouldn't count either, or it should count on every program. I could quickly throw in a free alternative, Airfan View, which I use when doing simple browsing. It's really fast, and you can have a shortcut for three different editors. It's faster and easier to use than Bridge. So why not throw that on everything and give them 10? And let's go on to support. Adobe is well known for having subpar support unless you're a big client. Lumina has horrible and slow support. If you're in doubt, look at the forums, search Google. They are not a consumer friendly company really. But to be fair, Adobe has so many users. Finding help and solutions from outside of Adobe is usually a breeze. And at last, we'll look at averages. First off, I only know Topaz Studios 2, not the first, and I've never tried Alien Skin, so I have been ignoring them and will be ignoring them, more or less. So let's take care of the elephant in the room. The one and only Lumina has an average calculated with and without the browser score. Maybe to underline how biased this review is and that Skylum definitely paid for it. It does seem quite unfair. It's the only one where you're allowed to subtract something it doesn't have. I don't know. So as we see, the clearly paid winner is Lumina. And I guess it's really fair. Ease of use, raw processing, nine. That's no way exaggerated. Seriously, try the program. Sarcasm. Layers, eight and nine. Sure, having a few simple layer options must be way better than having really good and effective layers.
I, I don't know. She's an expert. Presets. Nine. There's a few included and really expensive expansions. So much better than free and... Hey, you know what? I'm starting to think these numbers are bullshit. Yes, Lumina is fine. It can do stuff others can't. Well, mostly the versions after this one. This is Lumina 2018. It took them more than a year longer than they promised to add a digital asset manager or browser if you want to call that, which was terribly broken and never got fixed. Even now, support tells you to keep photo amount under 2000 to make it more stable and faster. 2000. Let's hope you're not a person who takes picture for a living that uses these programs. But then again, maybe she's the amazing kind of photographer that takes two or three photos because that's all she needs. I really did not do this to attack the author. It was first during reading this I realized it's a two-pronged job paid by Skylum. Part 1. Exaggerate Lumina's potential. Compare them favorably to Lightroom and Photoshop. Part 2. Attack one of the biggest competitors on one. They're both aimed at more or less the same audience and the prices are pretty comparable. It's really the only explanation. It explains the wildly inflated scores and why almost all criticisms of Unwan is either untrue, misinformed or a fault on her part and then just blatant obvious lies. So let's get some scores for this article. Informational 2 out of 10. There is some information there, but it's scattered and amateurish, and it's a bit too, let's say, hate for, promotional and attack ad. Knowledge, 1 out of 10. Not written by a person with much insight or experience. Either a fake person with fake credentials or a slightly known person's name slapped on template crap. I don't know if she is as crappy as what you can see here. Seems like someone who doesn't know what she's doing. Trustworthiness, 0 out of 10. It's a template course seller page. The kind that screams bullshit. Commercials everywhere for other things you can buy here. It's filled with commercial articles. Either paid crap like this or the kind with lots of commission links. Commercial shill, 9 out of 10. It's not all lies, it's paid focus, including smear campaign. So this time we need a quick recap, I think. When we look at this, she's an expert and a professional, and she teaches this to people. Hmm. Okay, let's start with teachers. She says she really loves it, but clearly she has nothing to teach since she apparently knows very little about cameras. Her knowledge about editing is even more basic and seeing how hard it is for her to do basic tasks in basic programs, even ones that is well labeled. Seriously, can't find layers. Hours? This does not bode well and spending hours finding out basic things that's literally a 10 second Google search if you know what it's called, like in this case, add layers in insert editor's name here and does her eyes work? It says layers. Ooh, and by the way, if the thing you can't do is done the exact same way in Photoshop or Lightroom, you're an idiot that does not know Photoshop or Lightroom, so stop lying. So expert, she says, well, clearly not. If you are or she were intermediate at any of these programs, then using at least the basic functions of any of the others should be a breeze. And if you claim to be anywhere near intermediate in Photoshop and Lightroom, none of these are difficult, except Lumina, which can be tricky at first with the changing layouts and different names for the tools. How is that not a problem when the difference of color fringe and fringing makes her brain break and in her favorite program she thinks it does not have lens correction because she does not see the tab but that's okay but in a program she hates it's stupid the lens correction is under lens correction like in Lightroom which is the right way to do it I'm starting to think is she right in the head professional no really no yes the definition is getting paid for said skill or work but if you paid a butcher to do surgery he would not be a professional surgeon. So no, this is scam territory. I think Trump University contained more facts and knowledge than this. You could dissect the idiocity for hours here. Like why can't you find layers in on one? There is two right beside the basic tab. Local and effect. Sure you probably need a brain to figure out effect layers is adjustment layers. But what about local layers? It's placed more or less the same as in Lightroom as a kind of tab on top of the basic settings. The same place in Lightroom. I never did get the hang of layers and on one raw as I didn't have enough time to spend learning it. That tells us something, right? Yes. Again, that tells me you're a freaking moron who does not know how to add local adjustments in Lightroom. Can she seriously be this stupid? I mean, she's doing this for a living and she's this. I, I, I don't believe it. So I guess we'll never know. 
I hope this helps weed out crap and misinformation. Take care until next time. Get informed and don't trust the paid parrots. And especially don't trust people with so stupid obvious lies. Oh my god.